Hey guys, what's up and welcome to the channel. I'm the Shotgun Shogun and ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. You know why you clicked on this. It's because you wanted to go in three seconds into the video, go to the comment sections and say, of course I'm going to roll on this. I didn't need you to talk for 20 plus minutes about this unit to tell me that I was going to roll on this. Look at those, look at those hips. Look at that little side fold. Look at that tummy. Look at those little heart tattoos there. Everything about this is just going to roll. You probably went out. You probably donated plasma for money. You probably sold your blood to some random person on the street you did what you had to do to start making money because this is going to be coming in like a week man and this is not only is her kit stacked she's stacked and we're going to go over it anyways i mean I, you could just end the video right here and be like okay no i'm going to roll on this those little hair buns the little nail polish that matches the sparkles on the donut donut there uh, amazing but we're gonna get into into it anyways i am so good so good man first off this s3 dude i'm ready are you ready for a meat buffet i won't say no to that same same i am yeah yeah for sure Okay, so we're having, basically we have a, um, a summer beach arc, right? Every anime has that. Every anime has that. The, also, the cool thing here is this is going to lead into the story three. So after the summer event, you can expect the third part of the story, right? Because they basically say, hey, we're, this, we're doing this before we go to the next part of the thing. Uh, she's she's super cute but we're gonna go we're gonna get into the stats because they talk about her quite a bit i want to show you this just because i mean the de the detail they put into just the butt section there uh so let's go over let's go over her skills right okay so first off 1119 attacks 6266 health 109 speed not amazing not bad either for a warrior she's a libra fire warrior by the way i was kind of hoping something maybe a little bit different than a warrior maybe like a tank or something along those lines as long as it's as long as it's not an ice ranger limited that's literally all i care about that's literally all i care about now the nice thing here is you do have an attack imprint but you also have the frontline health imprint which is pretty cool means that she's going to synergize very well with the likes of Lilius, right? Because Lilius back to, well, middle top and back is attack. She scales off of health. So you're going to have health in the front. If you SSS her, which I'm probably going to, let's be real. Uh, good defense, critical hit chances, base, uh, all that, all the rest is base right there. Uh, but overall, not bad, right? Uh, personally, I'm probably going to run with the imprint concentration just because I'm going to want to build her with more damage. Um, but it, a lot of times too, if for RTA, right? I like self imprint because I don't ever know 100% what my team comp's going to be. So if this, if the self imprint on like a tanky bruiser or a DPS is attack or crit, uh, chances are I'm going to go with that. Right. So either way, either way, it's going to help you out. Right. If you go, if you go high on it. Personally, though, I'm, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, I do think that the imprint is definitely worth. So we're going to go over the skills now. Um, okay, so let's talk about her skill too. This is like real big. Her kit is just stacked with ridiculous amounts of of stuff right so let's eat together reduces the effect of decreased combat readiness debuffs inflicted on all allies by 30 percent now you might be saying already whoa that's gonna kill basar but it doesn't stop there the skill effect does not stack with other passive skills of the same name okay i don't know that there's gonna be too many in the future that uh, that are called let's eat together you can't put two of the same character on the same thing um i do think that maybe this is going to be maybe something that they put out in the future like it doesn't stack with the same combat readiness debuff um the highest one obviously like the other ones but this increases evasion by 50 percent when the caster is at max health what this means that Basar has a 100% chance to miss her. The era of Basar dead, 
Deddo on her. Now, uh, you are going to want to run immunity sets because, as mentioned on the live stream this morning by New, uh, that doesn't mean that she can't be Abyssal Crown stunned, right? Because that doesn't rely on a miss. Chances are the Bissar is going to have a very high effectiveness, so you are still going to potentially be hit with the Abyssal Crown stun. So immunity, he can't strip it unless he has somebody ahead of him, which then the evasion goes away because he's not at full health. But the problem is, like, if you have, like, a FCC, you're going to have to go through that thick shield. You're going to have to go through immunity, all that, all that stuff, and it's not going to happen. Now, this is also going to reduce the pushback by, what, another uh, 20% here? Six, yeah, another 20%. So 50% reduction on that now you are still going to get pushed back it is going to reduce the overall by 50 percent uh it's not going to reduce 50 percent of it so like if you get pushed back 30 percent it's going to only reduce 15 percent of that but it doesn't matter it reduces it right and one of the big things with broman is that he's really strong against bizarre comps because he can't get pushed back now your whole team is going to have reduced pushback now if you have things like um elena a tywin uh holiday yuffie right you're going to, which she's, everybody's just going to call her Seaside Yuffie, right? No one's going to call her Holiday Yuffie. Some people might, but she's Seaside Yuffie, and that's just what we're going to call her from now on. Uh, but this is going to be real, real big because you're not going to get as massive of a pushback, right? Uh, not only that, but like I said, when she is at full health, 50% evasion, that means that like that opening turn, like if somebody's coming into cleave, let's say it's an Oxlots cleave, right? She's got that 50% evasion, right? right out of the gate can't push her back probably going to be building her tanky bruiser yeah, the tanky bruiser era will never die uh, much to the much to the dismay of cleavers right um so that's that's a huge right here um now one of the big things is that um you know even even if you're not at max health right uh, it doesn't matter because the pushback is really big. Any like the anti pushback is huge. Now there's not too many units other than like uh, Basar Dizzy that are in the current meta that do much in the way of pushback. Um, you don't really see too many too many Lydicas, uh, though you do see them every once in a while. Uh, but I do think that that's going to be really big, especially if she's on like a sustained team, right? You're going to be healing like crazy. You're going to be able to get her, you know, back up to full health, things like that. So it's going to be real big. That just evasion, that 50% evasion on full health is just real, real big. I can see her being ran with like double support and a tank, right? Okay, so we're going to get into... Yuffie's S3, right? So this dispels two debuffs from all allies and attacks all enemies in the middle of a night market before granting the caster increased greater attack for two turns. This is going to increase the combat readiness of all allies by 20%. Now, she's going to get missed by Basar, right? So they're not going to get pushed back. Uh, she's not going to get pushed back. You got immunity set on her, so she's not going to get stunned. This is going to work as a kind of like a DJ Basar cleanse push forward without the um, you know, without the the debuff immunity afterwards but she's gonna give herself greater attack um now one of the interesting things here is i'm gonna interested to see like what the modifier is right because this skill is so stacked and it's on a four turn cooldown right so this is gonna be a very 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 strong skill um in that uh, if you build her kind of like 220, 230, or even like 210, um, the Bassar is going to go, right? You're going to probably, in RTA, you're going to get the rest of your team pushed back. They're probably all going to get crown stun. So you're going to have them buffable and potentially a stun, right? Now, Yuffie's not going to because she's got evasion. You've got immunity on her. So she is perfectly fine. Now, she's going to get to go, especially if, like, let's say you have an Idol's Cheer on one of your Soul Weavers, and she does have, like, a decent amount of attack. She's going to pop right up to the front now the nice thing with this is that you dispel both of those debuffs and you push yourself your whole team back up to where they were plus some probably um and you also give yourself increased greater attack now one of the nice things here is that you can put maybe a slower ox lots you could put a slower 
um dj basar you could put a slower anybody who pushes forward maybe like a viken something like that um to help her get her lap back around to make better use of the greater attack the turn cycling in or the turn rotation in this is going to be very very interesting in how she kind of fits into that right and the speed tuning things along those lines now you can soul burn for 10 souls to give her an extra turn of greater attack and if you've ever been dumpster toileted by a Vivian, you will understand just how how much damage a greater attack can do on somebody who is stacked for even just decent damage, right? You don't even have to have like ridiculously crazy stats for a greater attack to just hot dumpster somebody, right? Uh, so this is just a very, very, very stacked ability and i'm yeah, interested to see what the modifiers are when this comes out um, because if you take a look here in the video we'll show you here in a second okay so you're up against an fcc right very very common um condom team pick right uh probably a decently thick shield but and the one thing is you can't really go by these videos because like if you take a look right here uh the a damage that she did here didn't even break FCC shields. So uh, one of the big things, like I said, you can't really go off of how like video stats, right? You got to take a look at like when she comes out, once her modifiers are released, things along those lines. Because if you looked at this right now, you'd be like, wow, that S3 is kind of hot doo-doo. But at the same time, it also dispels, gives her greater attack and cr pushes everybody else forward so even if it doesn't really do much in the way of damage like it's still a really stacked ability right so yeah i mean obviously it did damage there but yeah okay so now we're gonna go into her s1 and this is the follow-up from that s3 right this attacks the enemy by tearing up a food market with a 45 percent chance to burn for one turn when used on the caster's turn just one bite becomes an attack that targets all enemies aoe attack uh changed attack is unaffected by elemental disadvantage and does not trigger a dual attack uh, this is huge no elemental disadvantage a AOE on her S1 with a, what is that? 50, uh, 55, 60% chance to burn with a greater attack with already probably a decent amount of attack. That's going to be a lot of damage. That's going to be like flex tapes levels of damage. Now, one of the big things here though, is you are going to want to probably have somebody that can strip debuff immunity. Cause you are going to want to get that burn on there uh, just for that extra damage right now. You could probably run her with like a, a silver blade Araminta, right? Burns on burns, a carrot burns on burns on burns. I do think the silver blade Araminta probably the better one out of those, but you are going to want to have some sort of strip in order to do that. So maybe like a semi slower mid speed Flitica that can come through. Uh, you have Yuffie, she'll push forward. The Flitica will S2, that'll lap you back around. It'll also strip any potential, um, any potential debuff immunity that was on. And then you S1 into them and you do an absolute metric pile of damage. Um, it's going to be really, really strong IMO. We'll see it here in a hot second. We'll take a look at how much damage it did because I'm pretty sure it's the same match. So, uh, no, it's not. But this... This looks really fun because um, the way that this changes right here, the S1 move, oh, it just looks so cool, right? It doesn't trigger a dual attack, which, I mean, it kind of sucks, but, you know, I did see some people, they were like, oh, what about counterattack set? But it only does this on her on her turn, right? Um, so I think that speed immunity is probably going to be your best bet with really offensive substats. Now, her artifact is real interesting, right? Okay, so this is going to at max level, and I'm going to try to get a max copy of this 100% because I think that this is going to be really, really good. If not on her, it's going to be really good on Mui. And I'll tell you a little bit about that here in a hot second because this has pretty much everything that Mui needs, right? Um, so increases effectiveness by flat 30% when it's maxed out. Uh, it also, and I'll get out of the, I'll get out of the way over here. Okay, so it's going to have 30% increased effectiveness 
uh, when it's maxed out, right? It has a 26% chance to stun the enemy for one turn after using a basic skill. This effect is not actively activated by a counterattack, dual attack, or extra attack. Now, it's kind of an Abyssal Crown for her anyways um, on her S1. It doesn't work on her S2 or, or well, her S3. Um, so I saw a bunch of people, as soon as it came out, they're like, oh my god, Abyssal Crown for Warriors, what? Crazy, crazy, but it only works on one person, right? But it is a bit better of a chance, 26% chance. Now, the increased effectiveness is really good because you're going to want to have that for the burns on your S1. Um, you're going to want to have that for... Um, yeah, the burns on your S1. Now, honestly, I don't think it's necessarily the best for her, uh, just because um, I think there's other things that you can use, maybe like a Durandal, um, a Sigurd Scythe would be pretty okay to get the healing back. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of other things. I think that the burn on your S1 isn't really the main focus. It's the damage that you want to do. Um, It'll be it'll be kind of interesting to see now. However, however, I think that this is going to be the perfect artifact for Mui, right? Because what do you need? You need effectiveness on her. Now, somebody will be like, oh, but she only has her. It won't work on her S2 or her S3. That's fine. It, but, but if she uses her S1, not only are you going to put another debuff on them, uh, but you're going to stun them too. Not only that, but like I said, she needs effectiveness, right? In order to get all of her stuff off. So having a very quick-ish Mui, you S2, S3, then you're doing the S1s, right? And it's like, oh, hey, I put stun and attack down on you. Stun, defense break, uh, something along those lines. Uh, I think that it'll be really good for her. I'm going to get uh, as much of a copy as possible just because not only is it going to be good for Yuffie on her S1 uh, because you will get the AoE attack. Uh, and depending on how fast she is, right, um, this could be very good because you're not going to be using your S3 all the time. And as long as it's on her turn, so like if you're turn cycling, you're pushing her real fast, like let's say you're looping her with a lots ox lots just to pop out those S1 AoEs. Um, this is going to be really good. It's going to work like a, like I said, like an uh, AOE Abyssal Crown on her S1. Um, and that's going to be really, really strong. But I also do think that, uh, well, the 30% is also going to help with your, with your chance to stun them as well. Um, so that's going to be really big, uh, I think, honestly. So I'm going to get as many copies of it as I can, but we all know that pulling for limited artifacts is, is, a uh, is is real rough so taking a look here um did they use her s1 on okay so s1 here which makes it easier to inflict stun gives you the advantage in the battle it really does okay so i mean you got rid of the skill nullifier there um i kind of wanted to see how much damage so here's her s3 oh hold on hold on look at this look at this look at this in Oh, it's just so, so cute. Oh, look at it. It's so adorable. That's worth, that's worth the bookmarks alone. Now, I do think that she is absolutely a must pull. I do think that she's a limited. I think that she's going to be really good. I'm sure that some other YouTubers or Reddit is going to be like, man, her kit's not that great, blah, blah, blah. It, don't listen to them. They're probably not very good at the game in the first place. But I think that she will be good on a speed, speed immunity set. Uh, that's definitely good. And the nice thing is, is you're going to get immunity sets from the, uh, from arena this season. Um, I do think that she's going to need to be around like 210, 220 speed. Now, one of the problems is right. Okay. Let's go back to her stats right here. Now with her, I feel like it's going to be a little tough because she does need a little bit of everything, right? You're going to want to have crit chance. You're going to want to have crit damage. You're going to have, want to be reliably beefy because otherwise, you know, you don't want to get dead. Um, you're going to want to have more attacks so that you can stack. Although the greater attack does help you pad that a little bit more. Um, you're going to want to have effectiveness. Even if you do have the artifact, 30% is really not that much. If you're 
trying to get the stuns, if you're trying to get the burns, uh, things like that. However, you know, the 30% is good if you do have it plus 30, which a lot of people probably won't. Um, but you are going to want to have a little bit of effectiveness. You're going to want to have that attack. Like I said, you're going to want to have the speed like around 200 to 10. Um, just so that you can move forward and push everybody else forward, get rid of those debuffs, maybe move into a C Armin or something like that for immunity till she gets to go again. Um, something along those lines. Um, I do think though that you're probably not going to want to build her glass cannon, right? Uh, because you're going to want to get the S3, then you're going to want to get the S1. So I think that people who kind of looked at her like, oh, well, maybe she could be cleave, unless you're running like an uh, fast ox lots and like a slower than her regular lots i don't think that that is a thing uh that's gonna happen right and then you're also going to want to um or a faster a fast ox lots and then a semi fast lots then you could double loop right you could s3 and then lots will come through and then lots will push her right back to the front she'll have greater attack s1 cleans everybody out actually i want to try to that i want to try that now i want to try that now that actually might be really good. Not that not that many people would run that and you'd never be able to get that off in RTA. But I think that like for Guild Wars, that would probably be uh, pretty, pretty ridiculous. And I'm going to actually try that when she comes out. But I do think that she's going to be very stat hungry. And I do think that when she first comes out, it's going to be a little bit rough. Uh, personally, I'm going to try to triple S her like I do with every other limited. Um, hopefully it's not too hard, but do I think that she should pull for her? She's limited. So yes. Anyways, guys, let me know down below what you guys think about her. I got a couple more videos coming out today. So if you haven't yet subscribe to the channel, I do appreciate it. Comment down below with just about anything. Uh, you commenting and liking the video and sharing it out lets YouTube know that I am doing good work and recommends me to other people, and I always appreciate it. Uh, Patreon's down below if you want to do that. Just, uh, follow me over on Twitch. I will be doing some Leaf Pack giveaways soon, and I will catch you guys on the next video. Take it easy, homies. Peace. Thank you.